I guess we have to start at, at protocol, and that is what everybody seems to be talking about. Do you think the language of considerable period will be taken away from the statement, or do you think it will be left in? I think it will probably be left in, but I think there might be some added ang uh, language designed to weaken it a little bit. It's becoming an albatross because time is passing and you just can't keep on saying a considerable period. It's got to be uh, converted to something that's data dependent rather than time dependent at some point. Now, I, I know it's just me and you, even though we have uh, a lot of people tuning in, but quite honestly, that, I'm a little embarrassed to even think that here we are discussing words in a statement this many years after the crisis. Uh, do you feel a bit of agita that in, instead of talking about some of the issues that I would think are more financially important, we're parsing words in a statement where there's kind of a bureaucratic undertone to, to the Federal Reserve process at this point. Am I off base? No, you're not. Uh, before the crisis, uh, Alan Greenspan started using the same language over and over, and I argued against that within the committee because it just locks you in. But uh, this is not, not really uh, new uh, coming from the crisis. It's, it's kind of code, you know, the Fed uh, uses a word and then people decide what it means and then they're afraid to move away from it. That's why I think uh, Janet Yellen's going to kick that can down the road again today. You know, I, I think that we had a bit of data today that really, in my mind, underscores how far away from the norm we've gotten. We have the uh, uh, National Association of Home Builders Sentiment Index, and it came out at 59, the best level since 2005. But here's what I saw. The best, so we now have home builders as confident with 412,000 single family homes being built as they did in 2005 when they were at 1.2 million. To me, that really speaks volumes as to how we've kind of downgraded or diluted the American dream, but yet the numbers don't really reflect that. Any comment? I believe, Rick, that I remember that housing starts used to be around 2 million per year. And they're, they're roughly half that now. You're, you're certainly right. Our, uh, our normal is certainly degraded. Now, when it comes to inflation, uh, myself included, but we've been taken to the woodshed, so to speak, that we've been wrong. But I don't know if we've been any more wrong than the Federal Reserve, and you've written on this extensively. The, the unintended consequence of all this Fed policy to re invigorate and reflate the economy has ended up in large portion as excess banking reserves. Isn't that where the inflation is being hidden at this point? Is there any doubt in your mind that when those reserves actually hit the U.S. economy, and we can only hope they'll hit at some point, that that's when you're going to see the pricing pressures that have eluded uh, many of the inflation hawks up to this point? Well, you're right. Uh, QE was supposed to be a Milton Friedman type policy that would <clears throat> expand the money supply faster and cause uh, people to spend more. But the hoarding of uh, excess bank reserves by the banks prevented a lot of that money from being created in the first place. Uh, velocity of money has declined, but the velocity of reserves have declined a lot more. So if the government will get off the bank's back and they start uh, lending at a normal rate and turning those excess reserves into actual money in the economy, then that will be inflationary unless the Fed is deft enough to shrink that reserve base at just the right, right pace to offset it. 